So in the last month, I built an animatronic prairie dog. So before you start, I know what you're thinking. Why in the world would you want a prairie dog? Well, I'll tell you. Despite those, um, what's a good reason to hate a prairie dog? Shoot. Oh yeah, with the, despite the bubonic plague they carry, my grandma absolutely loves them. So the full story is that for last year, for Christmas, my grandma gave me a prairie dog stuffed animal, entirely because she knows I hate them. Now, why would I hate a prairie dog? You think they're cute. Well, maybe I do too. But the problem's not with the animal themselves, but all those pictures that my grandma takes. So many pictures. So the full knowledge that this prairie dog that she gave me was a joke. I decided to make it into an animatronic so that I could give it back to her this year for Christmas. So the animatronic is built to have three functions, or movements. It can lift in and out of its hole, it can wiggle its nose, and its arms can move up and down so it can take a bite of the grass it's holding. So, in this video we're going to take a deep dive into the lift function. The most important thing to know about it is that it is the function that controls him moving in and out of his hole. On a side note, do not search for popping prairie dogs, it's not at all what you want it to be. Kinda, kinda, kinda gory. At the heart of the lift mechanism is a rack and pinion setup driven by an MG996R servo. The rack and pinion converts rotary motion, like the rotation of a servo, to linear motion, like a prairie dog popping out of his hole. The rack is a pole with gear teeth on one side. The pinion meshes to these teeth, and when torque is applied to the pinion via the servo, the rack converts the rotary motion of the pinion to linear motion. So ignore that the teeth are way out of phase in this model, but the 3D model is exactly how it works. Another way to think about a rack is it's just a finite segment of an infinitely large gear. So from our finite point of view, the, ro the rotation of an infinitely large gear appears to be linear motion. The rack also works as the tower that supports PD as he moves up and down. In the three sides that do not have teeth, there are V-slots that the moving parts fill. This keeps the moving part straight up and down and all the teeth aligned, so the pinion and rack don't misalign or have a whole ton of backlash or anything like that. On top of that, it took a lot of sanding to make those move nicely to each other. I probably should have oiled it in some way or used graphite powder or something like that, but I didn't. So it was just a lot of sanding and once it worked, it worked and we don't touch it anymore. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's all fine and good. All that sliding happens. What in the world are those two extra gears in the back doing? Those gears are there because it makes the whole mechanism much smaller. So the mechanism is required to have six inches of movement up and down. That way the prairie dog can go all the way in its hole and then all the way out. So how much movement the mechanism can create relies on the circumference of the pinion and how much it rotates. So if we were to directly connect the pinion to these MG996R servo, it could only rotate 180 degrees because that's the rotation of one of these servos. And in order for the circumference to be... In order to move 6 inches while only rotating 180 degrees, we have to have a circumference of 12 inches. That works out to be just over 4-ish inches in diameter. Now, I don't know about you, but I think 4 inches here is about this big. Four inches is too big for a prairie dog that is six inches high. So instead of directly connecting it, I went with a two to one gear ratio or one to two. What this did is it doubled the motion coming out of the servo. So for every 180 degrees from the servo, the pinion rotated 360 degrees. This effectively halves the required circumference and diameter of the pinion, allowing it to be only about 2 inches, which is, well, it's half of 4 inches. Now, do you see those little spaces in between the servo and the printed moving part? Those spaces are there because I cannot do math, I swear. That being said, let's do a little more math about the torque. By gearing down the pinion, I was worried that the there wouldn't be enough torque from the servo to li actually lift PD. But I did some very simple math to figure out that the servo was indeed strong enough. And I want to show the math here because it's kind of interesting, plus who doesn't like doing Physics 1 homework again? 
So for this we need to work through the gear train from the very start. The drive comes from an MG996R servo, which is rated at 10 kilograms per centimeter. This will be easier if we convert it into newtons per centimeter, so by quickly cheating and using a calculator online, it works at 98.1 newtons per centimeter. Then in our drive train we have our 2 to 1 increase. So while our ideal torque, if we double the speed, the torque would be cut in half, but actual mechanical advantage never is that good, so let's say we only maintain one-third the torque. With only one-third torque remaining, our pinion is being driven by 32.7 newtons per centimeter. Now, we know the radius of the pinion is one inch from our earlier math, because the diameter is two, so we have to, but one inch is our US imperial system, and everything else is in the metric system, so convert that to the metric system, we get 2.54 centimeters. If we calculate the force that the pinion will apply, it's as simple as dividing the torque that's driven by by the radius. So 32.7 newton centimeters divided by 2.54 centimeters works out to 12.87 newtons. And because nothing is perfect, let's assume we only get three quarters that force, so 9.65 newtons being applied to the rack for linear motion. So, using our everyone knows the equation, force equals mass times acceleration, we can solve for the mass that the servo can lift, kind of. First, because it's force equals mass times acceleration, we need to determine what acceleration we want. And because I like arbitrary numbers, and so should you, we're going to use 1g, or 9.81 meters per second. To determine the mass we can lift, we'll use force equals mass times acceleration, like I already said. We'll have one addition. We need to subtract the force required to overcome gravity from the force applied. So final and final equation ends up looking like 9.65 newtons, the force that the pinion applies, minus the mass times 9.81, that's the force of gravity, is equivalent to our mass times the desired acceleration, which is 9.81. If we solve this equation, it looks like we can comfortably lift just under half a kilogram, or just over a pound. The final assembly for the prey dog ended up being half a pound, so there's plenty of pork, plenty of torque, not pork, there's no pigs involved, plenty of torque to move PD all around. So, in the next video, we'll look at how the arms and nose of PD worked, how they were planned to work, and what happened in between the differences there. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I promise there won't be as much math in the next one.